Hi, this is the second video about Chuck Designer. In this video, I'm going to cover an exciting new update to the system, which involves the Python interface. And because of this new feature, we can make a drum sequencer. In this drum sequencer, Touch Designer is going to maintain the model, the information about which notes are present for the different tracks in a drum sequencer. And Chuck, Chuck is going to be responsible for all of the timing, uh, progressing the playhead, and also activating the notes and rendering the audio. So let's look at the example in the uh, Chuck Designer project. And here is the UI and the Chuck audio operators over here. So I'll add, add the Chuck code to the operator. And now our timeline is progressing. And the play uh, position playhead or is right here. And that, that is being received through a Chuck listener. So Chuck audio is going to be rendering a stereo audio track and we're also fetching via uh, the Python callback uh, the uh, playhead position. And so that's just looping from zero to one. And this value from zero to one is also uh, changing the UI so that the UI, UI playhead progresses. So now we can listen to some audio. So that's fun, and I'll turn that off. And uh, the way this works is that uh, inside each of the, uh, this, and another nice feature here is that uh, if I were to resize this window, then everything resizes automatically, and that's because of the UI features of Touch Designer. But inside each of these tracks, uh, each track corresponds to a different drum sample, there is an array and so the array is four notes in this one and in this one it's four and so on and this is six or this is eight this is eight and that's 16 and we can also just inspect that with um, a chop right here so that's 16 values and uh, every every couple of frames or so we're running the script which is script update chuck vars that's over here and chuck audio is uh, doing this uh, update, it's, set, it's setting the int array of a global value. And the global value is uh, the, the presence of the note. So this is an array of four, value, four integers, and this is an array of four integers also. And so we don't need to update every frame. It would be OK if this LFO were running at our video rate 60 frames per second, but it's OK to run it at 20. And that gives you an idea about how Touch Designer is uh, owning the state of whether a, a note in a sequence is active or inactive. And it's sending that information continuously to the Chuck audio operator here. And similarly, uh, the Chuck listener is fetching information from Chuck audio. And so what that information is fetching is over here in the top right. So we are fetching the playhead position and we are fetching the uh, a float array variable of the ADSR curves and we're also fetching event variables. So I'll go through uh, the event variables first. So let's look at our Chuck code. So this is the Chuck code. And at the top, we are declaring a bunch of separate global events. And we are also uh, declaring some integer arrays. And so each of these integer arrays corresponds to the, the UI that we saw on the left. And when we uh, activate a, a note, then uh, we're going to, uh, uh, this, this notifier is actually for when Chuck plays a note because it, its timeline has progressed. We're going to use that to notify Touch Designer that a note has been played. So we, we see these uh, events uh, listed here, notifier zero through six. So we also type them here, notifier uh, zero through uh, six. And now in the callback, we can go to these uh, uh, the corresponding function, which is uh, get event. So I'm going to open my text port here, and I'm going to uh, start the, the code again, but I'm going to turn the volume down a lot. So I'm going to play the code, and now we have our sequencer playing. I'll go to get event, and now I'm going to print the event. And so now we have uh, a, a, a discrete event every time Chuck thinks that it has played a note. And I'll just uh, uncomment that. And I will um, turn the volume down to zero, actually. 
And the other thing that we're fetching is get float array. And our float array is called ADSR curves. And this uh, is a corresponding to a kind of loudness amplitude uh, envelope of each of the individual tracks. And so uh, in, our, in our Chuck code, it's declared here, it's ADSR curves, num tracks, and the number of tracks is seven. So when we receive it here, uh, the values is going to be an array or a list of uh, Python float uh, objects. So if I were to uh, print uh, that information, now we are getting lots of information. Every frame we're, we're getting the, this float array. So it's saying that the name is ADSR curves and the values is uh, these six values. And we are writing those values to a chop um, I just found that this syntax of writing to the chop to be uh, efficient. And then we are going to export those. Uh, we're going to do just a, a slight amount of renaming. And then those are going to be controlling the uh, background alpha values of our UI over here. So there's a little bit of cyclicality where Touch Designer is setting the, the note activations on and off. Chuck is running the system, progressing time, and figuring out what the what the audio needs to be. It's simultaneously calculating things like ampl uh, amplitude envelopes, which Touch Designer fetches again, and those are sent back into uh, controlling the UI here. And uh, this is just a, an example in this project. If you were to open up uh, this uh, component, this base called test callbacks and set methods, then I have an example for each kind of method. So these are pretty straightforward. So I, I just want to reset this so it's not cooking anymore. And I'll go to my text port, clear it, and uh, I think I still need to just turn that off. So now we have a float example. So the float, we can do something like set float. And uh, when we, we have our global float frequency and we are calling set float on it, so that's going to update it. And the Chuck listener is also going to get the, the, the float example. And all of the other examples are very straightforward, so I will skip them. Um, the only one that's special is the event example. And uh, this was a little bit similar to the drum sequencer, but I'll go over it anyway. So I'm going to turn these on. And our Chuck code looks like this. So we have a sound buffer with a special kind of audio that we can uh, chuck into it. It's kind of a do, do sound. And it's uh, going to play for one second. And after it has played for one second, we're going to notify Touch Designer that uh, our sound had played. And the other important thing is that there is an event pulse. And so pulse is being chucked to now. And so the audio isn't going to progress so to speak, until the uh, Chuck, until uh, Touch Designer has uh, sent a notification to the Pulse object. So what that looks like is we have our, our Do button, and it's going to broadcast event Pulse. And so because Pulse is being chucked to now, that's going to kind of halt. And then once uh, Pulse happens, then our, our play impact function is going to be sporked into a thread playing that sound. And uh, simultaneously, uh, we have a Chuck listener set up. And the Chuck listener uh, is going to say print get, uh, get event. And the name is going to be called uh, notifier, because notifier is what tells Touch Designer that some sound had uh, that one second has passed since uh, some sound played. So now let's try it out. We're going to hit add Chuck code and hit do. Go! And then one second later, it said get event. So uh, that is uh, the basics of how to uh, use the Python interface of, of Chuck Designer. We have Touch Designer, which can send uh, instructions like setting global variables to things like Chuck Audio. And the Chuck Listener chop here uh, can uh, fetch them uh, at a video frame rate. So it can fetch them if, you're, if your project is running 60 frames per second, then each of these functions is going to be called uh, once per frame. And we have it for all variable types too.
So I hope that uh, this has been uh, an exciting introduction to using Chuck Designer to make uh, musical instruments and sequencers, and I, I hope that more people can use it to uh, make games and other uh, great interactions uh, with Touch Designer. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.